Philip Sparks from The Easy Swing. Welcome to the second part of the beginner's guide, how to get started with golf. That's coming up right now. A quick revision of what we learned in the first course, which was we learned how to hold the golf club. Remember the dot on the hand and the dot on this hand, connect those together. Remember, we're not too worried whether you have a baseball grip an overlapping grip or an interlocking grip doesn't matter too much, just so long as you're holding it in your fingers and you've got that connection point there. Just show you what that looks like, take a good look at it and try and emulate something similar to that yourself. It's not too critical, so long as it's something like that. A lot of golfers get really hung up on how to hold the golf club and they put too much effort into it. It's really unimportant, so long as you've got these basics right, you'll be fine. Secondly, feel the weight of the golf club. It's a heavy implement, it's heaviest at the, at the end there, and you'll only feel that weight if you're nice and relaxed. If you're stiff and tense, you won't be able to feel that. So just let yourself relax, feel that weight, because what we're going to do is to swing that weight, and we're gonna swing that weight by making a nice, easy little movement back and through, back and through like that, to which we connect that heavy weight and swing it in time with you. That gives you the simplest possible golf swing. So once we've got that, all we have to do then really is to think about the dot on the back of the golf ball, the dot on the face of the club, and connect those two things to get a strike. Remember, when you get a strike, it's like a trampoline effect and it feels wonderful off the golf club. So let's just put that together There we go. And then we get a nice golf shot straight off to the target, up in the air. We then need to start using these other golf clubs. And what's the difference with them? Well, if I put them all together for a moment, I've got a wedge, I've got a six iron, and I've got a five wood. And if I put them all there together, you can see they all come to the ground in a slightly different position. My hands position is going to be pretty much the same with all of them. My body position doesn't change very much, but the club actually ends up a different distance away. And with this golf club, the five wood, that's going to create a bigger swing. And with this short one here, the wedge, it's going to create a smaller swing. What does that mean? Well, the smaller swing means that at the outside edge of that smaller swing, it's traveling slower. With the bigger swing on the outside edge of that, it's traveling faster creating more power. And if we think about why does the ball go up in the air with golf? Well, that's built into the golf club. You don't have to do anything at all yourself. If you look closely at a golf club, it has an angle on its face like that. It's unlike a cricket bat or a tennis racket or a hockey stick that hits flat with relative to the uh, handle. With a golf club, you have it's what's called loft. This six iron, Typically a middle iron will have about 35 degrees of loft. If we look at the wedge, this one has got 50 degrees of loft. And if we look at a five wood, that has 20 degrees of loft. So all of them are designed to hit the ball up in the air, but as you can imagine, how that angle changes, the more severe the angle is, the more the ball's gonna go up in the air and the shorter the distance it's going to be. Combine the two things with the length of the golf club and you have a device here that will control how far the ball is going to go. Now that's critical because when people start playing golf they often think I want to hit the ball further, I'm going to have to hit it harder, I'm going to have to put more effort in. You don't. In simple terms what's going to happen is you're going to make the same action yourself, the same swing, the same shoulder to shoulder swing, the same rhythm, the same timing, the same feel, the golf club's going to do the rest of it for you. So let's watch and see what actually happens when I try these other two golf clubs. I'm going to use a pitching wedge first of all, and I'm going to do the same thing. Same grip, same relaxed, feel the weight of the golf club. Final thing then, remember, connect the two dots, the one on the face to the one on the side of the ball, same thing. Let's do that with a five wood and let's see what happens. Again, nice and relaxed, feel the weight of the club, connect the two dots, one on the face to the one on the side of the ball. It's 
So that's it. It's a simple move, it's a simple, relaxed golf swing that you can use with different golf clubs to go different distances. Now, hopefully, you're starting to see that golf can be simple, it can be easy. Nice, easy way to learn it. What can get in the way of this? What can actually make it difficult? Because some people find golf difficult. Believe it or not, some people find it difficult. I'm hoping to show you that it's really easy and you can learn it in a nice, easy way. There's something that you have to watch out for, keep an eye out for, listen for in particular. And that's what's called, I call it, bad advice. In other words, it's advice, but it's bad advice. And you will get it from other golfers. These golfers are not trying to make it more difficult for you, but what they're trying to tell you is that they're finding golf difficult and they've been indoctrinated into learning these things themselves and they believe that they're gonna help you. They're not. What are they gonna tell you? They're gonna tell you first thing, they're gonna tell you to keep your head still. And they're gonna tell you to keep your eye on the ball and to keep your head down. And every time you hit a bad shot, no matter what the cause is, they'll tell you you brought your head up. So if that is true, that if you bring your head up, you're going to hit a bad shot, how can I possibly do this? It just doesn't make sense, does it? I looked up before I hit the ball there. When you're looking at the golf ball, and you're swinging, your eyes will be focused towards the ball. It is completely unnatural to do what I just did there and look away from it before you hit it. It's completely unnatural. And I don't see but golfers doing that. Even though I hear time and time again, I hear people saying, you brought your head up when you hit a bad shot. It just doesn't make sense. You can bring your head up if you want to and still hit a golf ball okay. It doesn't make you hit bad shots. What does make you hit bad shots is if you try and keep your head down too long. If you keep your head too still and you keep your head down too long, that's going to wreck your golf swing. So what hopefully you've already learned is a nice easy action, a nice easy golf swing that you can start to use for all the different golf clubs. And so long as you avoid this you won't be able to avoid the advice because it will be given to you anyway. But if you understand when people are giving you that advice that you really need to kind of just park that and remember the basics we've already talked about. Because if you do that, you'll find that you can um, swing with a nice, easy, relaxed action and still hit the ball every time. Other things you'll get told, you'll be told that you've got to keep your feet very still, other golfers seem to, seem to make you want to stay very still when you play golf. Keep your head still, keep your feet still, all of those sorts of things. Again, I can show you that when it comes to keeping your head still and your feet still, what you can do is look at that, moving all over the place. I still hit the ball. That doesn't stop me from hitting the ball well. They'll be telling you, keep your eye on the ball. Now I can actually just close my eyes and still get all of that movement. Look at that, still hit a golf ball. So if keeping still and keeping your eyes fixed on the ball are so important, how can I make all of that movement, have my eyes closed, not even be looking at the golf ball, or look away from the golf ball before I hit it and still hit the golf ball? It's really important to understand those pieces of advice are not going to help you. So just remember the keys that will help you are to stay relaxed, to feel the weight of the golf club and to finish well, swinging from shoulder to shoulder and you will get on fine. You'll learn golf pretty quickly and you'll progress very fast. Remember, as you get better, you can drop the tee height down to the, golf, to, to the ground and you'll get to be able to hit the ball off the grass as well. But don't start from that point. Just get the ball on the tee peg in the first instance. Now you've learned these principles, the key is to understand that it's a, we believe that you can move freely when you're swinging a golf club and you can make that movement as natural a movement as possible. Remember, you can just learn little movements like this that just help you to get that feel. Get the club head to swing in a nice, easy, relaxed way. These are natural movements. If you restrict them too much, the whole swing can become unnatural and 
becomes awkward and difficult and you don't want to go in that direction. So remember to stay free and easy, relaxed. If it feels comfortable, it's probably right. If it feels uncomfortable, it's probably wrong. That's a good principle to go by when you're starting golf. The best golf swings are really simple, really easy things uh, to see and to, uh, to enjoy. When you're swinging well, you'll find it feels free and easy and relaxed and there's movement. It's not a static thing. So don't try and be static when you're swinging. Let yourself move and that will help. That should now start you off on the right foot to play golf. We've tried to keep it as simple as possible to make it as uncomplicated and as direct as we can possibly make it for you to learn the basics of how to get the ball going towards your target and to make it go different distances. I'm sure as time goes on, you're gonna have some questions about this. So please go into the comments section below and ask your questions. We'll answer them. We'll let you know how to do various different parts. But what we've tried to do is to boil this down into the most simple elements that you need to get started with the game. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you liked it and would like to subscribe to our channel, it's free to subscribe. Please just click the button below and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.